All right, this is to show you uh, how to connect lights and general battery voltage and so on and so forth. So you can see this is a 7.4, which is a 2S, 3000 milliamp. And I'm going to connect my voltage checker to it. So you can see that an 8 point, uh, 7 point4 volt lipo pack actually delivers 8.4 volts, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, but generally around 8.4 volts. This one isn't quite charged. So we got 8.31. Let me check my other battery. There we go, that's my other pack. See, this is approximately the same. They haven't been charged in a few weeks, I'd say. Let's try my 3S Skylipo, which I actually haven't even used yet. I'm just waiting for my connectors. Okay, I'm always connecting this backwards for some reason. There we go. One. Two, three, and all 11.3. So this thing needs a charged because uh, once it's charged, it should be around 12 point something. Let's check my little guys, my little sky lipos, which I'm going to be putting in my 116 Summit, which barely fit, but they'll still work. Again, these haven't been charged either because I still don't have connectors. 7.6 so these really need a charge should be getting my connector soon hopefully and this guy seven point six. let's spend a little bit more of a charge in it okay you got a cheapy nickel metal battery here it's not too bad actually, but it's nothing special. We'll check the power on this one. Just to show you that a charged 7.2 volt actually delivers approximately 8.3, 8.4 8 volts. This one's not quite completely charged, so. So here we have a 36 LED string from uh, Hobby Parts. Uh, some of you seem to be wondering how to hook them up and how to use them and what voltage to use and so on and so forth. Typically speaking these are 12 volt sets but they will run on lower voltages uh, albeit a little with a little less brightness to them. I'm going to connect these to a 7.2 volt battery just to show you. This is a standard nickel metal battery since it's the only one that I have charged at the moment. Just to give you a good idea of how well they light with this particular range of battery. 7.2, 7.4 is probably going to be about the same. So as you can see, let me just connect properly. Okay, let me turn my light off. So we have some pretty good uh, power, even from 7.2. It's not too bad actually. 
Okay. Uh, I've had people ask questions as to whether you can run this on a receiver with the power coming from your ESC. You got a four pack here, which is equivalent to your receiver, approximately five, five and a half volts, depending if you're using, if you're using alkaline, it's six volts. If you're using uh, nickel, uh, rechargeable batteries, then it's going to be between five and a half, five and five and a half volts charged. So as you can see, not much happening here. You can see they barely light up. Switch them on and off so you can see the difference. So, not really worth running unless you just want like accent lighting in a really, really dark place or something. That might work. For those of you who want to try running it on a 9 volt battery. It can easily be done. It does work. As you can see here. The brightness is not bad. However, the drawback of a 9 volt battery is it doesn't have a lot of amperage. So when you try to run a long strip, let's say, like this one. Okay, it'll power it, no problem. However, the problem is it really, I don't think it'll last very long. So it does the job. It's a certain brightness. It's not bad. Now let's compare it to the 7.2. You see the 7.2 isn't as bright. As the 9 volt. However, the 7.2 would last a hell of a lot longer. And like I said before, ideally, the best batteries to run this off of is a 3S. Now let's try it on the 3S and see what kind of power we get out of these LEDs. Now that is bright. As mentioned before, ideally this is the proper voltage to be put on these LEDs. Uh, the strips are rated 12 volts. Uh, this battery is charged, uh, shows 12.5 we're showing 12.6 on my charger so give or take so 12 and a half volts is just perfect for these lights now if you want to run them on a higher voltage as in a 4s 5s 6s you can set up a 12 volt regulator. On mouser.com uh, you can look up part number LM7812CT it is 75 cents for one uh, you can look up how to wire it as well on the thing. The minimum input voltage is 14.5 volts so even a fully discharged 4S will do it. 
if you could read that you see the minimum voltage there that's basically what the chip looks like so you can use one of those to make yourself a 12 volt regulator uh, it would probably cost you anywhere along the lines of maybe a dollar and a half to make uh, all you really need is the regulator and a capacitor here you go, I found a nice wiring diagram for y'all it's very simple input on the left there's a capacitor on the input, you don't necessarily need it because you're using a battery uh, even the output the capacitor is questionable because your input voltage is very stable being a battery uh, but I would put one anyways uh, figure your output's 12 volts so you need like maybe a 16 volt capacitor uh, on the output uh, if you guys want uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you want me to actually put one together and show you uh, you can put one together quite easily uh, without a circuit board uh, and simply uh, shrink wrap it all together so it looks nice and neat uh, you could even make it waterproof if you wanted to by dipping it in some uh, uh, some kind of coating whatsoever so let me know if you want a physical uh, rendition of this particular drawing and I will uh, put one together for you alright So that pretty much concludes LEDs. I can't really think of anything else at this particular moment. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, any more demonstrations you need as far as LEDs go. I'm going to be making another video uh, setting up a bunch of LEDs on a chaser and so on for nice, some nice special effects in that. Now the LEDs when you buy them they come in different lengths but you can do whatever you want with them that is given that you cut them in three LED sections so basically you got your first you got your connector then you got your first set of three so it's one two and three and then you have a little line with a plus and minus on either side now you can cut this right here Now I have experienced some LEDs burning out, and when the when an LED out of the when one LED out of the three burn out, the three of them do not work. So what you need to do is basically cut that section out, or you can leave it in. Uh, get get basically one of the LEDs out of another section. Let's say that you might have cut off, or that you had from another set, or so on and you can actually unsolder it and put it on the burnt one now the way you're going to check to see if it works is you're going to take a 3 volt pack and you're going to test them that way so if I go here this is to test the individual LEDs Okay. so you can put one on one side and one on the other or vice versa. You gotta figure out which side is which, as in positive and negative. You see, this one doesn't seem to work. Let's try this one. See, this one works. Now I have this one that the center one doesn't work, and this one also has one that doesn't work. So I'm gonna take one from here and replace the center one on here. So all I gotta do is, is figure out which one of these actually works. Okay. So I'm gonna take this LED and replace the center one here. I'm gonna take these off very carefully. My tip isn't really that great, but I'm gonna attempt to do it anyways.
Okay, got one side off. Place the exacto underneath. Go get the other side. There we go. We got one LED. Now, we have to match the way it sits. Okay, so it's going to go like that. stay too long because the plastic, plastic is going to burn. There we go. We got the burnt LED off. Now this is the tricky part. Getting this new one on. Make sure it's in the same direction as the others. You just look inside the hole and match it with the other ones. You'll see. You can see what direction the anode and cathode are facing. Wow, this is really small. Okay, let's see. Get this in there. Okay, it's soldered on. Now we need to test it and see. Okay, I'm going to solder some leads onto it to make it easier. soldering iron. Okay, there's one. There's two. Tin up my wires. the piece that I took the LED off of in the first place there's still one good one and one bad one basically just test them out the same way we did before and I know the middle one on here is no good so I'm gonna go ahead and take the black marker and put some markings on it basically saying it's no good so I got an extra LED here that I can use if ever some other LED might burn out. 